Hello everyone! Everyone knows that there are many hidden references in the animated movies of the Disney Universe, but believe us, you won't spot many of them without hints. Today, we will tell you what interesting easter eggs the animators have hidden in the new movie Luca, and what other surprises you haven't noticed in your favourite movies over all of these years. Let's get it on. This touching movie about the adventures of two kids on the Italian coast is the most recent work by Pixar. Seems like screenwriters decided to go all in and put hundreds of references in it. Here, for example, you can see the underwater helmet worn by the main characters. Do you recognize it? Yeah, this is a carbon copy of Nemo's house, where he lived while being kept in the office of the dentist, Philip Sherman. There's also a scene when Luca flies over the city in an aircraft designed by Leonardo da Vinci. In this scene, we see another obvious reference a puppet doll that jumps on the cobblestones together with a cat and a fox. These characters, albeit slightly different, clearly represent the characters of everyone's beloved Pinocchio. And given that Pinocchio was based on an Italian fairy tale, this reference just had to be in the movie. Another easter egg from the classic Disney world is a Donald Duck figurine in the room of the main character's friend, Julia. Soul, last year's hit movie by Pixar, has such a touching plot that you don't even pay attention to the easter eggs right away. Though you really should, because there are a lot of them here. But they're not so easy to spot. For example, in the scene where 22 in the body of Joe Gardner is captivated by the street music on the subway, we see a mysterious combination of numbers on the train. Does it ring any bells? This is an obvious reference to Monsters, Inc. In this movie, the code 2319 was used to describe a hazardous material breach. There is also a curious scene in the movie when Joe's soul arrives to the great beyond. Soon, Mischievous 22 takes him to the Hall of Everything. This is the place where you can find literally any item in the world. It would be odd to expect Pixar's animators not to take advantage of this opportunity to put stuff from their other movies in there. And they did it. For example, you can see the Pizza Planet truck here. It first appeared in Pixar's debut film, Toy Story, and has been featured in nearly all of the studio's work ever since. There's also a whale hiding in the hall. Dory from Finding Nemo tried to chat with him. As well as a weirdly shaped rock from Cars. The spacecraft, the Axiom from Wall-E, the iconic Cinderella castle from the Disney intro. A funny lamp from the Pixar intro. The attraction that stuntman Duke Kaboom rides in the fourth part of Toy Story. The tram car and the Aztec pyramid from Coco. And the blimp from Up. Wow, this is definitely a record. In their desire to skillfully hide easter eggs in the movie, Pixar's animators have reached a level never heard of before. They often put references to movies that haven't even been released yet. In one of the scenes in Seoul on the streets of New York, you can see a colourful poster saying, Visit Porto Rosso. Actually, there is no such place in Italy, but it exists in the movie Luca, which was released a year later. Oh, if only the history of our planet really followed the plot of The Good Dinosaur by Pixar. The dinosaurs would have never died out and would have lived side by side with us to this day. By the way, this movie is also full of cool references. For example, here's a scene where a giant Tyrannosaurus rescues Arlo from Velociraptors. There's a similar scene in the first part of Jurassic Park. only with people instead of other dinosaurs. Don't think that all Easter eggs in Pixar movies are references to other animated movies. Sometimes the scriptwriters get a bit carried away and add references to feature films. For example, in The Good Dinosaur, there's a moment where Arlo is sitting by a fire with three tyrannosaurs. One of them, Ramsey, tells the story of how she lost part of her tail. The tip of her tail got stuck between stones, and at that moment, a herd of longhorns started charging towards her. Without thinking twice, she bit it off to escape. This story is clearly inspired by an episode from the movie 127 Hours with James Franco in the title role, where the main character was trapped between rocks. At the end of Coco, there is a funny episode where Miguel takes part in the musical contest of The Land of the Dead. 
There are many contenders, rock bands, and a very strange dude who tries to play all the instruments at once. Wait, don't you notice anything? Look a bit closer. He's wearing the exact same t-shirt as the evil Sid from Toy Story. We wonder what the animators wanted to say. Coco was released a little less than a year before the premiere of the second part of the cult movie, Incredibles. Pixar decided to elegantly reference the superhero sequel in one of the scenes where a company of spirits runs down the street, with one small detail. On this poster, the members of the Incredibles are stylized as the dead from the land of the dead. The whole story of Coco is full of Mexican traditions. No wonder Pixar's writers included cultural references in the movie. For example, in one scene, Miguel sees a ghost who looks a lot like Frida Kahlo. This is a famous Mexican artist who you can't confuse with anyone else thanks to the unusual shape of her eyebrows. The Day of the Dead is the key theme in the Coco movie, and generally in Mexican culture, the writers decided to use this opportunity to pay tribute to their loved ones who are no longer with them. During the credits, we can see a touching shot with photos of deceased family members and friends of the studio staff. There is much less fiction in the Brave movie than you might have thought. Do you remember the first time Merida saw the wisps in the forest? They helped her find her way back home, and later to the witch's cottage. Turns out that wisps like that really exist. This is a rare natural phenomenon that can be seen in the fields and swamps at night. Scientists still can't explain their origin, but most likely it's caused by bioluminescence or spontaneous combustion of bog gases. The screenwriters of Brave spent a lot of time exploring various ancient locations in Scotland as they wanted to make the movie more authentic. Take, for example, this cool place with standing stones, where a good part of the whole story unfolds. Turns out that this scenic location is almost identical to the ancient Callanish stones, which appeared in Great Britain back in the Neolithic period. For some reason, almost no one noticed this easter egg, but it's okay, we'll show it to you now. Here is a scene from Brave. The main character's brothers steal cookies during a traditional competition in the kingdom. You know the movie with an almost identical scene? Aladdin, which came out 20 years earlier. There, the loyal companion of the protagonist, the monkey Abu, stole watermelons in the market. Nice going, Abu. Another fresh movie from the Pixar studio, Raya and the Last Dragon, is also full of Easter eggs. For example, there's a moment when Raya goes to Talonland and walks through a noisy market. Near one of the counters, you can see a funny rooster with a basket on its head. This is clearly a reference to Hey Hey from Moana. Only the most loyal Disney fans will recognize the reference in this scene. Hint. Don't you notice anything unusual about the way the staff at this tavern are dressed? Yes, this is Mickey's hat from Fantasia. A shocking fact, that came out in the 40th year of the last century. And one more cute easter egg. The kitchen of the same tavern is run by a rat, which is very similar to Remy from Ratatouille. Perhaps the funniest scene in Zootopia is the interaction of the protagonists with a sloth in the road service department. Also, on the desk of the sloth, you can see a mug with a funny inscription. You want it when? Later, we can see the same mug in the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph in 2018 on the table of one of the characters. Another easter egg in Ralph Breaks the Internet is the Kingdom of Arendelle from Frozen. You can see it in the snow globe of one minor character. It is no secret that Pixar has long been owned by Disney. A couple of years after this merger, another deal was made that amazed the whole world. Disney bought Marvel. And of course, now Disney sometimes references this in its cartoons. For example, the car horn of the truck that Hank drives in Finding Dory is a reference to Captain America's shield. Some Pixar fans believe that all the characters in the studio's cartoons live in the same universe. We don't know if this is quite true or not, but here's one possible proof of that theory. Riley from Inside Out, who watches Dory and the other inhabitants of the Monterey Marine Life Institute in Finding Dory. In the third part of the hit Cars saga, Lightning McQueen finds himself in a brand new training center, where he's forced to ride along the track and do funny exercises. There is one easter egg here which you'll not notice right away. One of McQueen's colleagues, Gabriel, is feeling nostalgic for his homeland, and to cheer him up, the curator shows him footage of his hometown. The character then joyfully exclaims, Santa Cecilia! 
Santa Cecilia, mi pueblo. Win for them. Well, did you recognize it? Yeah, this is a fictional city where the story of Coco takes place, and both movies came out in the same year. And this is the episode where the owner of the training center, Sterling, informs McQueen about the end of his career. Notice the Easter egg on the right side of the shelf? Yeah, here it is. Cinderella's carriage from the cult Disney movie. Maybe it also used to participate in world-class races. You've probably already noticed that Pixar has recurring Easter eggs in different movies, like the Toy Story pizza truck and the silhouette of Mickey Mouse. But there are two other references the writers really love. The first one is a rubber ball that can be seen in every second work of the studio. You can see it in Luca and in Coco as well. Do you know where it came from, though? From the very first film made by Pixar. It was short, and the plot told about a large table lamp mother and her son. The ball is his toy, which he breaks by jumping on it. And yes, you guessed right, the Pixar mascot also came from that very first movie. The second traditional reference is the mysterious combination A113, which appears every now and then in Pixar movies. For example, here is a shot from Luca. Here, a mysterious inscription appears on a paper train ticket. In The Good Dinosaur, this code is more difficult to spot. It's made up of thin rods on the fence of the chicken coop. So what does this code mean? Turns out that A113 is the classroom used by graphic design and character animation at the California Institute of the Arts, where many of Pixar's staff have studied. Hey, stop being lazy, it's time to use that brain of yours. Welcome to Brain Time. Incredible facts from the past, the present, and even the future. The power of nature and wild animals. Amazing facts and unsolved mysteries. You'll find all this and much more here. Subscribe now, you won't regret it.